Welcome to Lesson 24, where we're going to take a look at a number of operations you can do on arrays. You may, you may have your list already defined, but you need to take something out or put something in or reverse it or sort it or you name it, we've probably got a function for that built into JavaScript. This is still all native JavaScript that I'll be showing you here. So quickest way to do that is with an example. So let's jump into it and go over to my first sample script where I've got a list array with Craig, Stacy, and Chuck in there, not in that particular order, and I just want to output it. So copy that and paste it into script's background, and you can display the array contents just by saying, print the array, and I don't need to loop over it or do anything. And it inserts the comments. It creates a string output. Now, another way I could do that, that you may have seen elsewhere, is to do a to string. That's a string operation. And it will do the same thing. Paste that in there. And it looks the same. But now I know for certain, and I can tell the author of this script, or future author, this is converting to a string. We'll see another way we can do that in just a minute. But keep in mind that whenever I display an array like this of strings or numbers or whatever, it automatically inserts these commas. That's fine to an extent. It may not be what you need. And think about if you're returning or passing these in and out of functions, you can pass an entire array into a function. You're not including those commas. Okay, That's, that's something that only happens at output time. The next example I've got is actually several examples in one. Let's take script number two, and I'm going to build this up in stages. Here is my array again, but this time, instead of joining with just a simple comma, yes, I, I have seen people build their own for loop to take each array element and concatenate on a comma, then the element and a comma, and an element and a comma. What often happens is they end up with an extra comma because they're making their own string. This is completely not necessary. To avoid the extra comma, they put in an if in their for loop and say, am I at the end and leave it off? Wow, that's a whole lot of pain and suffering when you've got something as simple as join. And it might not even be a comma. It might be a colon or, a, in this case, a comma and a space if you look real close. So this time when I print out list, I want to make my own string concatenated together. I want to join them together with a comma and a space. Maybe this is for a formatted report or something. And I run that and out comes Chuck, comma, space, Craig, comma, space, Stacy. There's no extra spaces and commas at the end. I don't have any crazy logic to say, am I at the end? Let's forget it. Join is a wonderful, wonderful way to concatenate array elements into a nice displayable output. I could have slipped in a backslash n, if you remember some of my characters from before, and said, put in a new line between each one. It says list equals Chuck, new line, Craig, comma. Maybe you want that all on its own and say, put a new line here so that I see a nice clean list of what my array elements are. List equals Chuck, Craig, Stacy. Sometimes it's easier to read an array that way. Okay. Join is a wonderful thing. I highly encourage you to take a look at it. Next one I want to add is push. Push allows you to add into an array. Here, I'll just show you. It's easier to see it than, than say it. But if, I've already got my list that says Chuck, Craig, Stacy, and then I push in Dave and Andrew, I get Chuck, Craig, Stacy, Dave, Andrew. It puts them on the end. It's building this array for me. So the first push puts on Andrew. Why would I use this? Because I may be looking through records and I want to build an array of what I saw along the way, whether it's numbers or short descriptions or sys IDs. I want to keep that information in my array and I can just sit there and go push, 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 done. You've got an array at the end already built for you. Very, very easy to do. And counter to push is pop. Pop doesn't take any argument. Pop takes things off of you think it's the front end or the back end? Well, if push puts it on the back end of the array, where do you think pop comes from? Surprisingly enough, it comes, takes it off the end. So I can push these on. It's, it, they, these come from stack terms. Okay, Think of a stack of dinner plates. You start with a count, uh, nothing on your table, and you put a plate on. The first plate is at zero. And then you stack another one on there. You push it onto the stack. And you push and you push and you push. 
And when you pop, it takes the last one first. So this is also, what is it, a, a LIFO, last in, first out kind of thing. So the last thing on the stack that was pushed on is the first thing that's popped off. So there you have it. You've got a standard array defined with three elements, two push statements, and a pop. So where would you use this? Quite a few places if you're doing array manipulations and it's not exactly, you know, and you need more data later or you need to get rid of some data as you're operating on it. Let's take a look at another one. This one's called shift. Now, maybe you don't want to take Andrew off first. Maybe you want to take Chuck off the list first. So let's, let's take Chuck, Craig, and Stacy. Forget about David and Andrew for a minute. And then I'm going to list it out. What is the first element in the array, the zeroth element. I'm going to start using that term so you get accustomed to it. What is that first thing in the array is element zero. What does it say? It, of course, should say Chuck. Then I'm going to do a shift and say, now, print the entire list and then show me what's in the first position. So that's what we've got here. Let's go see it at work. The list, first thing in the list, after I say Chuck, Craig, Stacy, is Chuck and Craig and Stacy. Then I do a shift, and it takes the entire list and goes, <clears throat> shift it so that one becomes the zero spot, two becomes the one spot, and it rolls Chuck off no more in the array. The length just went from three to two, and the first per the position in zero is now Craig. So you can do a FIFO, first in, first out. So you could push them in and then shift them out. Two different ways you can access this. Now, keep in mind that shift is destructive. So if you wanted a copy of the original, you would need to make your own copy of the array contents, which you could quickly do with a for or for each loop and have your own data that way. So that's shift. Let's look at another one. This one uses unshift. Unshift? What in the world is that? Well, unshift says, I've got my original of Chuck, Craig, and Stacy, and I'm going to unshift Andrew and unshift Jason. So it says, take these two things, Jason and Andrew, and put them on the front of the array. Whereas push would put them on the end. So now I've got ways to put things on the front, put things on the end, pop them off the end, shift them out the front. Very easy to do. So different ways you can do things to the ends of these array. What if you need to get at things in the middle of the array? All right, this is where it gets fun. We're going to do a splice operation. So splice takes this notation from position whatever. That's the first thing. This one's two. Remember, we started zero. Okay. I've got this many things to remove. And if you don't want to remove, you can insert and then you start sticking in your value. So splice can add or splice can remove. If I use a zero, it's going to add on Carrie and Henry or Henri. <laughs> we'll be international about this and take Eric Donna, Melanie, and Jesse is my initial names. I'm going to join those together to output what it looks like at the beginning. Then I'm going to splice in at position two. One, two. Theoretically, is it going to go between Donna and Melanie or between Melanie and Jesse? What do you think? Well, Carrie and Henri went between Carrie, or excuse me, Donna and Melanie. So according to the code, position two is not zero, one, two. It's one, two, there it is, okay? Or you can think of zero as being nothing. So keep an eye on that. That one may get a little confusing for you as to what the position refers to. If I wanted to take out two things, then of course I wouldn't have additional values in there. I could say, hey, you know what? Let's take out one thing at position two. Well, that looks like it's gonna take out Donna. Let's find out what happens. Oh, Melanie is gone. So position two is in fact removing one element. It's, it's like a pointer. It says click, click, that's two. Now delete one or click, click, now insert two. So if you want to think of it that way as a mnemonic of how you can get at that. Next example, <laughs> script six is going to use slice, not splice, but slice. So it takes a start and an end position 
And it says, here's Eric, Donna, Melanie, Jesse, Howard, Tomas. And displays out the list and says, get the names at positions one and two. So click, go up to one. There's, there's one. So think of your pointer here. It says position, click. One is here and get these three. I should, and then I save those into subnames. It returns an array. Okay, if you're spli slicing an array, you're going to get an array. And I should have Donna and Melanie. So go get those two names because I said I want everything from positions one to three. I'm sorry, I, it's a start and an end, not a start and a count. That was my mistake. So get names of positions one and two. There's positions one and two, Donna and Melanie, and that is exactly what we see. Handy if you want to get into an array and get certain elements out of an array. You, oftentimes you just need one thing out of there. Go to this position and say, get list sub i. Okay. But if you need multiples and say, you know what? I, I, do I, first of all, do I have that many? Make sure you don't exceed the array. What would happen if I said, go from, let's say I've got one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. If I had said, five and one, I should get Tomas out of there, right? Back up, paste that in, and I get nothing. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. My pointer is out here at the end. And I said, go get one. It says, I have nothing for you. You get nothing. Okay, so know where your bounds are. I could have done a check on this first and said, hey, you know what? If Names sub dot length. If, if if my index is greater than names dot length, you don't you can't do this. Okay, I might be using variables in here. You don't want to do that. So let me undo that. So when I go back to save it, it won't say, "Hey, you made an update. Congratulations." And then my next example shows reverse. Does basically what you expect it to do. Eric, Donna, Melanie, Jesse, Howard. It's going to go Tomas, Howard, Jesse, yada 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 on the reversed version. So very simple. I don't use this one too often, but it is nice to know that it's there when you need it. So Tomas, Howard, Jesse, Melanie, here. you got it. And I believe I've got one more. Script number eight. I'm doing a glide record query. And I bring this up because it is very important. Remember the getters and setters from, what was it, lesson 19, I think it was, 20? Somewhere we were doing some glide record queries. Well, that's where this comes in handy. I'm going to build an array using push. But if I wasn't using a getter and setter, watch what happens. If I just said sysid, which I've done at least a half a dozen times in my career, we're going to define a list, it's big and empty. This is often done in a function. I do this kind of thing all the time when I want to save or return a list of variables or values. I declare my incident glide record, go get all the priority one records and salute. <laughs> and then for each record that it comes back within this while loop, I'm going to create an array and I'm going to put on the society of that record, or so I think. And when I do that, after I'm done, I'm going to print out what the list is. Run that and I get all the same societies. What happened? Well, as it turns out, I don't know if I can explain this clearly enough here. We're still early in our JavaScripting, but Remember that pointer I was using with slice and splice and that kind of thing? That's kind of what's happening here. It's moving along a pointer and it's not saving the sys ID, but it's saving a reference to what glide record is pointing to. So when you get done, it says, hey, I need 25 of these things, if that was 25 on the screen. And whatever you're holding right now is what I got. So I, I saved 25 references, not 25 values. It's a bit like the address on a house versus who lives in the house. Okay, I don't have the addresses. I've got an address book that has all the same addresses in it. So I know that's a, a bit of a concept to wrap your head around. But if you ever see something like this, just note that you just got a whole bunch of objects. Okay, I don't want the objects. I want a copy of the value. So let me go back and get that. And the only difference is this get value in here. This is why I underscore 
many, many times, getters and setters, get value, set value, you will avoid a lot of problems if you get in the habit of using these. It also gives you the availability to slip in another field as a variable name. Maybe I have a variable called F name and I say this time through the array, I want F name to be sysid. And maybe next time I want it to be number and next time I want it to be something else. This completely obfuscates the any issues and says, great, here's your societies, all of them unique, not just that last one duplicated over and over and over again. So want to point that one out when it comes to arrays because getters and setters can get you into some hot water. So now you know <laughs> a great many operations you can do on arrays putting things into them at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, taking things out of them, reversing them. There's a lot of information. Look on the internet for more of that and play around with these. Get comfortable with them. Know what's in your toolbox because arrays are very powerful. I look forward to talking to you next about some ServiceNow utilities for managing arrays. So hope to see you there for that. Thanks.